Well, hello everybody, Pastor Joel here with you one more time for the past days with Pastor Joel. Hey, if I seem like I have a little less energy than usual, uh, I'm just really tired and kind of shot. And uh, for those of you that, that have come to the same view that I hold, fulfilled eschatology, aka preterism, full preterism, um, and I'm not saying we would agree on every single nuance, but those of you that um, understand the scriptures that way, um, it can be hard sometimes, can it? It can be a lonely, lonely road. It can be a costly, painful road. And I know that I'm only too well. And uh, some of you know my story more than others. There are things continuing to happen after quite a long time that are just honestly devastating um, as a consequence just for sharing um, what I believe about the Bible. And, and that ought to be something that we can do um, without being concerned about being you know, accused, condemned to hell, persecuted by, think of this, other Christians. It's weird, isn't it? Um, and I am going somewhere with this, but I want to just take a, a moment to get there. I remember when I started seeing some of these things, and, and nobody nobody showed me. Um, I, I wasn't even studying eschatology. You can find out more about that in a video I have on this channel called um, How I Came to the Preterist Belief or something like that. And, and then I also have in my playlist um, under interviews, there are several interviews that people have done with me, and I go over some of that. But at any rate, I remember being so amazed because when I learned this, I mean, it was it was breathtaking. Um, it was this huge paradigm shift, right? Um, it was just a it was a wild ride, and it still is, but the not quite as intense as it was. And I'm I'm thankful for that. I don't think I could handle that level of intensity on ongoing. Um, but I knew that this would be very hard for some people to understand, because it would have been hard for me to understand had somebody come and said, hey, Joel, let me show you some of these things from Scripture um, with the beliefs I used to have. I think that would have been very jarring for me. So I knew that, and I started getting involved in Facebook, and that's kind of where I'm heading with, with, with this, is just some engagements on Facebook and how frustrating they can be. Um, but I started getting in these groups, and, and I would sometimes ask questions. I would kind of introduce myself to the group. And I, I still, I still remember this. We're, we're talking maybe, mm, how long ago? Over three years ago, maybe come, you know, three and a half coming up, maybe even coming up closer to four years ago. When I started, it wasn't it hadn't embraced full preterism, preterism at that time. It just started to see some of these things, largely the, the time statements, audience relevance, and, and you know, I came up with an acronym: Arts Way is the best way to interpret scripture: audience relevance and time statements. But I, I remember. You know, asking these questions in these in these groups, and I probably was primarily posted in maybe maybe two or three groups and then others on occasion, and I was absolutely and these these were groups that were you know in, in favor of the fulfilled view, you know, preterist groups, and I could not believe the biblical knowledge of these people, and I you know had been in in full time vocational ministry for like well over 20 years of doing music and then as a pastor of vocational ministry, meaning getting paid for it. I always, I always, I don't like to say I was in ministry because my understanding is that every Christian is in full-time ministry. Um, so vocational ministry is just where that's your livelihood comes from. But all of you watching this channel, if you're in Christ, you are in full-time ministry, I believe. Uh, wherever you are, wherever you work, whatever your circumstances. And uh, so at any rate, I was hearing these comments and I was learning so much about the Bible from people, most of whom, you know, they, they weren't in vocational ministry and they, were, they weren't pastors, they weren't Sunday school teachers, they weren't elders, you know, they weren't in parachurch you know, ministry. They, they were just people that took seriously the admonition, Acts 17, 11, to be a Berean. The Bereans were more commendable than the Thessalonians because when they heard what they had been taught, they went back to the scriptures daily to see if whether or not what they had been taught was true. And who were they comparing scripture with, by, by the way? It wasn't just you know, old, old 
Sally Know Nothing. <laughs> it's better than Joe Schmo, isn't it? It was Paul. Paul and Silas, I believe, that were teaching them, and they're like, yeah, we, we better... We better check that, Paul. Make sure you're right. And they went back to the scriptures, other places we know that we're supposed to show ourselves as those approved, that we're supposed to rightly divide the word of truth and so on. And these were people who were doing this, and I could not believe how much knowledge. These, I, not my favorite term, but the, you know, these laymen, regular, ordinary old Christians, and I don't mean that in any pejorative sense, they knew so much about the Bible. They could, and I, I know a lot of pastors, these people could smoke pretty much any pastor that I know. I mean, the, the, somebody that's in full-time vocational ministry, that that's what they do. And these people in these Facebook groups knew more than they did. And they knew a lot more than I did. And first of all, let, let me just commend you. Let me commend you for that. And I just, I began thinking... And, and I've continued to think, and, and, and I'm going to get to now the, the specific point why I made this video. How ironic is it? How, and I'm not saying anything new. I mean, I'm preaching to the choir. I know that. But we need to affirm one another sometimes. How ironic is it that those of us, to, to the best of our ability, with our you know, three pounds of gray matter, how ironic is it that those of us who have taken the time to honestly try to be good Bereans, to honestly try to rightly divide the word of truth, to show ourselves as those approved, how ironic is it that we're the ones that are heretics, that we're the ones that are condemned to hell, that we're the ones that lose relationships with our family, that we're the ones that get kicked out of churches, that we're the pastors who lose our church and, and also, like in my case, lose your vocation. How ironic is that? But even, let me take it a, first step, a step further. How unlike the way of Jesus is that? How you know, unchristlike is that? I realize, believe me, as most of you watching this channel, it, it's a huge paradigm shift. I get it. I, I went through it. You, you went through it. We remember. But what is so frustrating, and I'm sure you've experienced this, and this is this is this is to date with me now. I've you know having this view, embraced it fully, three and a half years ago, somewhere in there, and a small small handful of people, whether um, you know in, in person, online, hardly anyone is willing to open a Bible and look at the scriptures. And this just happened again to me a little bit earlier today, and that's why I'm leaving the video now. Somebody that was just just being a complete jerk. You know, I made a post, I made a comment about it, you know, can show me where the scriptures teach that. Back and forth a few times, all I got was insults. I tried to be kind, tried to be respectful, and cited some verses and not one time, not one time was the person willing to address any of the verses I cited. And I try not to like, you know, just like bomb people with all these verses. I just, I just shared a couple. And you've all gotten the insults. Well, you're just dumb. Well, you don't take the Bible seriously. <laughs> I saw another one this morning where just a guy, I'll, I'll leave him nameless, but a guy that's a, that's a friend of mine, an online friend, and he was was challenging anybody to to look at some of this, you know, the gospel, go through the gospels and look at this generation and what it says and what it means. And this person posts, you know, well, preterists hate the book of Revelation, therefore they're taken out of the book of life per Revelation 22, 7, or whatever. I mean, he didn't even, didn't even address my friend's, you know, challenge. <laughs> so my friend had this meme that's like stupidest post of the day ever with this trophy. And, you know, I don't like to be like that, but I laughed out loud at it. And it's just so frustrating. And I just, you know, I made a series on First Peter a few days ago. And that was uh, because another guy just simply would not even one time, wouldn't even one time address any of the scriptures that I shared, even though I was taking lots of time to address those that he shared. Why is that? Why is that? 
why do people, not everyone, but many times go to insults? Go to ridicule. I love what Don Preston says. Ridicule is not refutation. I've stolen it, Don. Thank you. Why is that? If our view is so stupid, if we're so heretical, if we're so damnable, then why can't those who have a different view just show us from the scriptures where we're wrong? Why can't they do it kindly? Why can't they do it in a Christ-like manner? Sorry about my, my phone going off back there. Why? I think you know why. Because what we believe, and again, do I know everything? No, I don't know everything. Many of you watching know far more than I. But there's a reason, and I want you to just affirm you in this, and then I'll end this video that I said was going to be pretty short. It's shorter than most of mine, but it's not all that short, sorry. But I just want to affirm, encourage you. There's a reason. And assuming that you're not like, you know, like being an obnoxious jerk. There's a reason that people don't like the things you say when you stand up for these beliefs. There's, there's a reason that they call you a heretic, that they condemn you to hell, that it can cause problems in your relationships. And that reason is not you. That reason is because when they go to the scriptures, if they're honest, and if someone's shown them some of these verses that actually can, you know, can do it halfway decently, they know, they know, they can see the words. They can say soon, quickly at hand. The judge is right at the door. They can see, you know, First John two eighteen. It is the last hour. They can see, you know, several times at the beginning of Revelation and three times at the end of Revelation. Revelation twenty two. I think it's seven, twelve, and twenty, where Jesus says, "I am coming soon." They can see Matthew sixteen twenty seven and twenty eight. He's going to come in the glory of his Father and bring rewards with me. Some of you will not have died by the time I come. And the parallel Mark 8, 28 through 9, 1, where Jesus says essentially the same thing. He's bringing in his kingdom and some would not die. But they can see that. They can see this generation. And I don't want to you know, paint everybody into this corner, but pride has so much to do with this. I've thought about this a lot. I've had a lot of conversations, some with some of you. What, what is it? What is, it's pride. What we believe isn't confusing. God is not the author of confusion. God can tell time. Keep fighting the good fight. Fight lovingly. You know, I like to say don't be offensive, but but beyond offense with this, this we're talking about Jesus. We're, we're talking about the integrity of our beloved Savior, the integrity of the apostles, the integrity of the Old Testament prophets. I just felt kind of led to make this and, and uh, pray for me. I'm praying for you. Try not to get jaded. Try not to get resentful. Try not to get bitter. Try to keep your heart soft. I know it's hard to do. I'm struggling with it today. But let's keep praying for one another. Let's keep loving one another. And let's love our brothers and sisters. But let's be on offense. This is, this is too important. And let me just again, I, I appreciate you, I commend you, you're brave, you're brave, you're brave for sharing these things. And, and uh, our Father, He loves us, He loves you, He loves you as much as He loves His Son, John 17. So, with that, Pastor Joel saying, bye for now.